This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 18, verse 22, and it reads, Whoso findeth a wife, findeth a good thing, and obtaineth favor of the Lord. Now, usually I don't do videos <laughs> pertaining to this subject, but it is very important because the times we're coming into, uh, seven women, which is a complete number of women, shall cleave to one man, and that one man being a man of the Lord that understands the principles of a woman that understands his place in the system and also understands the place of the women or woman that will be placed under him. That it is for lineage, for children, for a house, for a building, all right? And for a structure. And there's always a, a, an orderly government or an heavenly or godly order, all right? Which is found in Corinthians. Everyone has a head. Save for the heavenly father. He is the head of all. He is the ultimate. Okay. The head of every man is Mashiach, Yahweh Shai, whom the world is eagerly called Jesus Christ. The head of Mashiach, our Lord and Savior, and the King of Kings is his father, even our father, his God and our God, even Yahweh, the most high, the almighty, the existing one, the everlasting. All right. And then the head of every woman is the man. Preferably the man of God, the man of Yahweh, who had been set up to have that state. And even all men, even in the realms of men, the men are the head over the women. And the women are over their household, even the children. Preferably over the sons, to raise them in the way of the father. All right? So everyone has a master. Everyone has a head. All right? We're looking to our head. So you women if you're in your right mind, are looking to your head. And soon, come soon, will all women be seeking that protection and that hedge, but will not find it. Only the elect women, the elect ladies with their children that will come forth of the man that will become the head, the protection, the protector, okay? That will guide them into all truth. So Lord's one, this is an edifying lesson. Let's read this in Proverbs 18 and 22. And I'm going to play this clip out and begin this lesson. Whoso findeth a wife, findeth a good thing, and obtaineth favor of the Lord. That's the ultimate. As many dudes are out here married and all happy and under one weak woman, but she has power over him. And, and he giveth his way to that which destroyeth kings, his, his whole power, his, his might unto women. All right? It says many have fallen. Wine and women have uh, brought men of understanding to naught. All right? have destroyed them. This is the book of Proverbs chapter 19 and 14. This was all about house and riches. This is Proverbs 19, 14. House and riches are the inheritance of fathers and a prudent wife is from the Lord. Now you go into the word prudent, it means to be careful or sagacious of quick perception. The woman that understands her husband and is careful because she knows the realms of men, all right? The only men that she can say that she's safe amongst is her father, her brothers, men of her family, and ultimately her husband, because they, they, they look to do her no harm. But in the realms of men, men that are not close to the woman or of her kin or of her family or of, you know, her protector being her husband, because she falls under his bracket, will do her harm or sell her off, or destroy her, or, or do whatever. So it is a very important thing that ye women know, ye women folk, <laughs> know that the man is the head, and you are a possession unto him. First you are a possession in your father's house, then you are a possession in your husband's house. And it is a thing of great value, because women in the ancient world, and even in this time, are still of great value, because what you have is of great importance and what you can do can serve a great purpose as the women in the scriptures served a great purpose. Those that are yet written and are named served a great purpose, but the women in this time, a lot of them serve no purpose and will be destroyed. So that is why the Lord is preserving the elect women. All right. So without further ado, I'm going to play this clip. Shalom. you being under a man's headship. If you're 
under that man's headship, the enemy can't even touch you. The only way he can is if he gets you separated from your husband. You will have to wait until your husband is away to get inside your mind. If you have a praying husband and he's praying over that household, demons can't even live there. They're uncomfortable. You can sleep peacefully. Be careful with saying, I don't need a man. You're basically putting death on yourself and your household. You're saying that there will never be a man worth needing in my house. Start asking God, start, start praying, God, bless me with the man that I do need. That's needed. I need his warrior spirit. I need his intelligence. I need his wisdom. I need that guiding me. I need that. I don't want to curse my household before it was ever created. I don't want to curse myself before I ever received it. Careful saying I don't need a man. Women, be careful with saying I don't need a man because the enemy fears you being under a man's headship. If you're under that man's headship, the enemy can't even touch you. The only way he can is if he gets you separated from your husband. He will have to wait until your husband is away to get inside your mind. If you have a praying husband and he's praying over that household, demons can't even live there. They're uncomfortable. You can sleep peacefully. Be careful with saying I don't need a man. You're basically putting death on yourself and your household. You're saying that there will never be a man worth needing in my house. Start asking God, start, start praying, God, bless me with the man that I do need. That's needed. I need his warrior spirit. I need his intelligence. I need his wisdom. I need that guiding me. I need that. I don't want to curse my household before it was ever created. I don't want to curse myself before I ever received it. Careful saying I don't need a man. Women, be careful with saying I don't need a man. Because the Yeah, man. How many times do you have to hear it? And that was wonderful, man. Beautiful. Call all your law, your how about your mouth shy. All right. And she was she was on it. She's like, I need that war his warrior spirit. <laughs> hey, because hey, first and foremost, a man of the Lord is a warrior for God. All right, he's gonna pray over his household. First, pray over himself, pray over his woman, and pray over his children yet to come or his children that he already has. But hey, men establish the houses of children, but a wicked woman will pull them down. So without further ado. Let's go into Ecclesiastes 9 and 9, and we're going to start this lesson. Ecclesiastes 9 and 9, live joyfully with the wife whom thou lovest all the days of the life of thy vanity, which he have given thee under the sun, Yahweh Shema Shai, all the days of thy vanity, for that is thy portion in this life and in thy labor, which thou takest under the sun. So with that, giving all praises, glory, and honor unto Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. Yahweh is the name of the Heavenly Father in whom the world has ignorantly called Jehovah or Yahweh. And Yahweh Shai is the name of his only begotten Son in whom the world has ignorantly called Jesus Christ and whom we do worship. We are the Hebrew Israelites, which consists of you so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native American, and Seminole Indians. Salaki, what the hell is going on with this phone? Salaki, brothers, what the hell? Okay. <laughs> These phones are fucking crap, man. So like, yeah, I have to just say it like that. They're crap. But yeah, giving all praises, glory, and honor unto Yahweh Bashimel Shai. Yahweh being the name of the Heavenly Father, okay, whom the world is only called Jehovah or Yahweh. And Yahweh Shai being the name of his only begotten Son, whom the world has ignorantly called Jesus Christ, and whom we do worship. We are the Hebrew Israelites, which consists of you so called Negroes, Latinos. Native American and Seminole Indians to the 12 tribes, which are scattered abroad. Greetings, giving double honors unto our apostles, our elders and our teachers at Great Millstone that are ruling well and continue to do so. Salutations, peace and blessings unto the hopeful elect, the house of David, to your brothers out there fighting this good fight of faith. All right. Shalom unto you and you sisters doing that which is becoming a women. I say shalom. Lord's willing, this is an edifying lesson. All right. And Lord's willing, I call this lesson. All right. Um, pretty much as it was said in Proverbs, uh, to find a good wife is a good thing. Let me, let me get that real quick. I'm on basic, basically off this Proverbs right here. Whoso findeth a wife findeth a good thing. That's what I'm going to call it. So Lord's one, this is edifying. All right. The true name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. Yah meaning he, Hawa meaning exists or is or is to be. He is. He exists. He 
the existing one, for he is a rewarder of them that diligently seeks him. And in the name of his only begotten son, who has a name that is above every name given amongst men here on earth to the Israelite man first, and also to the believer consisting of women, children, helps of the prophets and those that have faith. They'd be calling upon that name, even that mighty name, the name Yahawashai, Yah meaning he, Yahawashai, meaning deliverer and savior. For that is exactly what he will come and do for the second time in physical form, yet as an angelic force, for we shall see him as he is, and we shall be like him. All right, so I already gave you uh, the title of this lesson. All right, whoso getteth the wife, you know, getteth a good thing. All right. Whew. Ecclesiastes cuss 7 and 26. Has thou a wife after thy mind? Forsake her not, but give not thyself over to a light woman, a woman I don't know nothing. All right. Now, moving on. All right, we're going to go to the points here. Ecclesiastes 26 and 1. Blessed is that man, or blessed is the man that hath a virtuous wife. She has the same spirit as you to to have and show integrity because virtue is, goes into manly, courageous, brave. So if she has that spirit of showing integrity, like, no, I'm not going to disrespect my husband or my house, and I will not put death or a curse upon me and my house before it is even ever built or established, or even if it is established, she will not put a curse upon her house, knowing the importance of her husband, all right, in the realms of men, all right, or even in the city or in the midst of the elders and things of that nature. But these women that have no no, no morals or anything, they're, they're a disgrace to their fathers and to their husbands if they even have them, or just a disgrace to their family in general, or, di or, or disgrace to the city in which they live. And the Lord is going to eventually put them down. Now this is Ecclesiasticus 26 and 1, blessed it is the man that hath the virtuous wife, for the number of his days shall be doubled. You see that? Because it's a gift of the Lord ultimately. Ecclesiasticus 26 and 3, a good wife is a good portion, which shall be given in the portion of them that fear the Lord, Yahweh, by Shemal Shai. That's it. Ecclesiasticus 26 and 13, the grace of a wife delighteth her husband, and her discretion will fatten his bones. Now, let's get this word discretion real quick. What we had on, on time. Bear with me, brothers. What the hell is going on? The hell with these phones. All right, cool. Discretion, let's get it. All right, we're going to go to the etymology, discretion. And I have another clip. All right, real quick clip, discretion. So like, yeah, nope, discretion. Or discretion, I like how the brother uh, Mike Allis says it. Got to have discretion or discretion. All right, and the word discretion or discretion it says, the ability to perceive and understand, moral discernment, ability to distinguish right from wrong, prudence, which uh, sagacity, which it means to be of a quick perception. Uh, the woman must understand and know her, her, her man, her husband, what he wants, what he likes, what he dislikes. All right. Uh, uh, his his uh, his lineage, where he comes from, his his house, his father's house, his morals. What pleases him, what he demands be done for his own children, what what his upbringing was and what the woman that he's with, her upbringing and how you are brought together, how you two have been brought together and how you must proceed forward. All right. Sagacity regarding one's conduct, the way you live. Discernment. See, women have to have discernment especially uh, the women of the Lord that are going to be placed with the men of the Lord. As their men have discernment, you women have to have discernment as well. Power to make distinctions. You got to know a hoe from a housewife. You must know this. Come on now. It says power to make distinctions in classical Latin, separation, distinction. So you have to be separate. If your man doesn't want you in the streets, don't be in the streets. Because a lot of these women are for the streets and they're going to die there. They're going to be trodden down as the mire of the streets, but you need to know your place, your, your, your kingdom, your, your castle is your home. And your man has given you full, uh, uh, credence over that place. Though you run it in the mind of him, you run it for him. 
but best believe know that you are protected because he is your hedge round about. He is as the walls around Jerusalem. All right. Now say your Jerusalem, so to speak, the walls round about Jerusalem is as the Lord is round about his people, just as a husband will be round about his woman, even if he's not in her presence. That's just as this woman said, he's praying over that house. The demons don't even want, want to tread uh, uh, there. And she was right on that. Now let's go back to the scriptures. All right, and we're going to uh, bring out another clip. Ain't going to make this too long. Bear with me. Bear with me. All right, Akim, I'm back. This is the book of 2 Maccabees 14 and 25. He prayed him also to take a wife and to beget children. So he married, was quiet, and took part of this life. I'm going to play this clip. Shalom. Eat your food with joy and drink your wine with a happy heart. For God approves of this. Wear fine clothes with a splash of cologne. Live happily with the woman you love through all the meaningless days of life that God has given you under the sun. The wife God gives you is your reward for all your earthly toil. Whatever you do, do well. For when you go to the grave, there will be no work or planning or knowledge or wisdom. I have observed something else under the sun. The fastest runner doesn't always win the race, and the strongest warrior doesn't always win the battle. The wise sometimes go hungry, and the skillful are not necessarily wealthy, and those who are educated don't always lead successful lives. It is all decided by chance. That's it. And the Lord has given uh, uh, the men of the Lord the greatest, because we may not have everything or the money, and the fastest doesn't always win the race, nor the strongest win the battle. You got to understand that. It's beautiful. So what you women have to understand all this uh, uh, high value men crap and six figures and all that fucking crap. That's crap. If a man doesn't have the Lord on his side or is serving the Lord, that man is nothing at all. I don't give a damn if the nigga has a trillion fucking dollars. It doesn't mean shit. Just as Solomon is stating in Ecclesiastes, uh, you know, every person has time and chance. But then you're going to go to the grave any fucking way. Now, what the men of the Lord understand is that we're not going to uh, death is not the end. We, we know the power of the resurrection. We know our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. We see the future. We see past this place. So if, if a woman is, is, is uh, know that her man is the head, well, he sees the future. Trust in him. Uh, mark ye the perfect man for the end of that man is peace. The men of the Lord. All right. And that's going to be your hedge. He's going to be uh, 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 the, the protection in the storm. He's going to be a great rock in a weary land. He's going to be that ravine or that river in a, in a, in a desertous place. Okay? He's going to be a covert from the storm. There you go. Uh, now let's...